Mojang have doubled down on the minecart, making even more changes to things like the chunky minecarts, lots of minecarts in the same space, as well as minecart jumping, and indeed the way that minecarts handle small slopes like this one. All of these changes raise the questions, which Mojang have answered, regarding a potential minecart update, and also they've made some very useful changes to the bundle, redstone, and even the game more broadly. Hello, I'm IBX Toy Cat, and welcome back to another update news video. Today I'm going to cover all of those changes and more in this fairly quick news video, but also also, we'll be briefly covering the Bedrock version of the game. Obviously, I am a Java majority YouTuber, as you're all very aware at this point, but there are some interesting changes they've made there, which will affect the next update. But first things first, the small changes. You might not know this, but Minecraft Java has some performance issues compared to Bedrock, but they've actually slightly fixed some of these because they've improved the performance on high-end devices uh, when using high render distances, which is very good. They've also made it so consuming items that leave an item in creative mode, like, say, drinking a potion, won't leave that empty bottle in your inventory, this is very good, and also projectiles will bounce off the world edge, which is nice, I guess, but not as nice as the way that minecarts have been changed, because I really love that they've brought back the chunky minecart, or if you want to call it the glitched minecart, you can call it that too. Here is a regular minecart sitting on some tracks, notice how the shadow is kind of grey, and here is a lot of minecarts sitting on the track all in one space. This is uh, what happens when you can place a bunch of minecarts on the same spot, and you'll notice that things break the moment we try to move them, because they won't all move perfectly in sync. In fact, eventually they're going to split up and do some very, very weird things. This used to be the best way to get minecart speed, which is presumably why Mojang removed it fairly recently, but they brought it right back, and if you want to, you can activate this by simply using a dispenser to put minecarts on rails, because they've also changed the way that dispensers will dispense. So fun fact, if you have a dispenser, dispenser minecart, it won't actually dispense as a solid, as I'll show you right here, unless you have some tracks right next to it. So there's a minecart just being spat out, but if we have some tracks next to it, as we do right here. Here is seven minecarts and a dispenser, and if we activate it a bunch more, here is three minecarts and a dispenser, because the rest have all been laid out onto the tracks, and now we've just got minecarts hanging around next to each other. It's a very, very fun thing that Mojang have brought back to allow us to get potentially even higher speeds, because obviously the minecart experiment is a toggle that you can turn on that allows minecart speeds to increase greatly, which is very, very fun for doing things with TNT minecarts, but we'll come back to that later. For now, it might be worth referencing the fact that they've also changed how minecarts deal with slopes. Um, so the obvious example would be uh, two slopes next to each other. It used to be they would forever be bouncing from one to the other in an almost glitchy way, but now it resolves this pretty quick, which is good because it's very, very weird uh, the way that minecarts go from being flat to being up slopes. Again, almost looks glitchy, I would say. You might even say it definitely looks glitchy, uh, but they've kind of resolved that a little bit. They've also resolved the way that minecarts doing jumps kind of appear. Uh, so when they uh, jump on over a long distance, minecarts pick up this downwards angle, which makes some sense. Although it looks weird when it flattens out again. I'll show you it one more time. I will push this over the edge and it will slowly drift downwards before flattening out. And so when a minecart now goes for a short distance, I'll show you this with just a few brick blocks here and then a couple of rails over here. Uh, when a minecart does a short jump, it shouldn't go vertical anymore. Over just a short distance, uh, it will instead look like this. As you can see, we're going to look fairly flat and it kind of looks like it just kind of uh, magnetically attaches to the bottom rails. But that is the big improvement that they've made to short jumps, making them actually look seamless rather than having a needless down followed by a flat. Minecarts are kind of buggy looking sometimes and this is a good improvement to them but also an interesting improvement, one that I uh, thought was fun, was the way that minecarts will magnetically snap to rails has kind of been fixed slash removed. So just as uh, fun by the way, you can actually jump minecarts over a gap now if you have the increased speed and uh, if we place a rail over there, um, you can see something very interesting which is that minecarts will snap to the middle of tracks something which they won't do after jumping long distances now, but they'll still do it on short distances, which means that happens, and so ooh, look at that, isn't that fun? Um, I think it's a lot of fun, and maybe you do too, but yeah, it means when we go over a big distance like this one, as you can see, wee, we're just gonna land wherever we land, and if that happens to be the center of minecart track, it does, uh, but it doesn't force us into the middle of a block, which is very, very handy. So, minecart changes uh, are pretty uh, drastic and pretty many, uh, but they're basically just adding all the little things around the edges, because they have actually directly responded to people saying, Saying, oh, I guess it's definitely a transportation update. There have been titles all over YouTube basically suggesting this, uh, but there's a little bit of a problem in that that we'll discuss after we go into the bundle changes, because bundles have also been a somewhat uh, hot topic of discussion. A lot of, it's interesting, I feel like Bedrock players by and large really like the new bundle, uh, but a lot of uh, Java players are saying, eh. So, but first of all, brief update, here is the new bundle. Instead of being crafted with rabbit leather, it's a single piece of leather and string. You can get this on day one, basically 
basically always now, which is great. I really love that. But you know what else I really love? Uh, being able to take items out in any order. It used to be a first in, first out system, but now what we can do is we can grab our bundle and get all of this early game loot and put it into the bundle uh, in whatever order we want to, right? And then using the uh, the number keys, we could take it out. But so here's the fun thing that you can do now. Uh, so you can use the number keys on Java to decide which item you're going to take out first. Very, very useful. But now if you want to, I'm going to maybe take out those poison potatoes actually, which should be number two, uh, so I can fit more items into here. Uh, now they've decided to not just show you eight items, which is what it was before, but now you can see up to three rows in the bundle at any given point in time. This is much more akin to the actual use case for the bundle, because sure, eight items is possible, but I find myself filling up way more than 12 slots, and if you can have up to 12 slots, you can do a lot more maneuvering. You can't actually access anything past nine easily. I guess you put nine in, then scroll. There we go. Uh, so it's a little bit trickier to use these slots, but I just like that the bundle will show you what you have in there. And if anything, why does it limit it to three slots? Why can't I have a bundle that has 16 slots or 20 slots? Or even if you had to go crazy, 64 different items in there. I think the limit is still too low personally, but this is the limit they have. And this is what they've done with the bundle, which is pretty great in my opinion. So uh, yeah, you can now, uh, the bundle tooltip fits three rows and that's wonderful. And with only two, two rows in the tooltip, the behavior of pushing a four of items down the bundle uh, removed half of the visible items, which was too much. And they said they added the third row to make the design work better, which I totally agree with, by the way. By the way, I love these developer notes. I have to come back to that later. But for now, let's talk about Redstone because they also changed Redstone. Um, so last week, you might recall how they made it. So Redstone will now activate... Um, oh, I've accidentally moved the tray. I, I should have acted, uh, put this over there, really. Uh, redstone has now changed so that based on where the redstone traces are closest, that will activate first. I'm now going to just, uh, you know, pretend this didn't happen for a second. So let's say we activate. So here is the same piece of redstone uh, in three different directions, except how you activate it has changed. When you activate it from the left, the left piston retracts first. From the right, the right piston retracts or oh, activates first. This is because the redstone is hitting it sooner or they hit it at the exact same tick, but then they know to activate this one first. But when you activate it in the middle, Mojang did something pretty crazy, and they decided to make it random. That is something that upset a lot of redstone users. To me, uh, you know, as someone who is fairly casual in the redstone world, I thought that this was a good change. Randomness in Minecraft, a coin flip being activatable just like this, seemed really, really cool, and if you didn't want to do it this way, you could just use the left or the right redstone, but a lot of redstoners said, yeah, sometimes you can't avoid this, and it should never be random. Redstone should always be procedural, and so Mojang have changed it so that now now redstone will always favor the left path. Obviously, when it, you're closer to one side, it still favors that one over the other one, so the right can be favored there. But when when redstone branches into two paths and they're both of equal length, the left path comes first, which means the left piston will always activate first, unless you feel like going a little bit crazy, in which case you could theoretically use this with some weird switcheroos. So this is my left path, but as you can see, it goes round and then activates the right piston. Um, using this exact same setup, we can have the right piston activate first. Is that really, <laughs> is anyone really going to go through that for this particular contraption? No, but if you want to, you can use the left first bias to make things happen on the right first. But in general, uh, yeah, it's a really handy little feature. And uh, yeah, that is a uh, part of an experiment that is likely not coming to Minecraft for, for a bit, right? It's being refined quite a lot. Whereas the bundle is not only, uh, you know, being refined week by week, but they've explicitly said it is coming to Minecraft. They It is a feature they want to add. They announced it in 2020. They re-announced it in June of this year. And so this is uh, the weird thing about experiments on Java. There are now four separate categories of these experiments. Uh, there's the minecarts, there's the villager trade rebalance, there's the bundles, and then there's the redstone. But for Three of these are much less likely to come to the main game than the others. Um, obviously, uh, the, the bundle, if you're curious, is basically a lock-in at this point. It's a matter of what update it comes out in. Will it be 1.20, 1.2? 1 uh, if it bedrock, that's 1.20, 1.30. Or will it be uh, the next major update, 1.22? Um, we don't know for sure, but I would suspect it's the first one. But there is a much harder thing to do with the minecarts, and that is why I'm glad Mojang explicitly addressed this. I, uh, again, personally, I've been the voice of reason saying this is a cool change, but I think it is Mojang experimenting more than anything else. But a lot of people, even a lot of YouTube videos said, yeah, this is a minecart update. 1.22 is the travel update, which I think is a little irresponsible for your audiences who might then actually believe it and say, oh, wow, I guess it's going to be that way. These are experimental changes. And Mojang said this in response to the idea of an update for it. They said, please note that the experimental features behind this toggle, referring to the minecarts, are not aimed at any future releases at this time. Instead, this is a place for us to try 
try out changes and gather feedback. I think Mojang does want to change minecarts, but I think the idea of them being able to speed up to a thousand blocks just like this is probably not that realistic of one. Um, I, I feel like what this is doing is they're testing it to the extreme, allowing you to set some speeds, and then at some point in the future, if it fits a future update, they can tie it into there. Okay, so here's something fun, right? Um, if you want to, you know how TNT can have a- Oh god! <laughs> I should have seen that one coming, really. But somehow, totally did not. <laughs> I've made something a lot jankier here, but my explanation as to why I'm glad that Mojang aren't adding these minecart changes to a future update, as insane as that sounds, is because of the simple phrase, let Mojang cook. I'm going to put it in those terms because it's really important they have a place to experiment, just like how I wasn't expecting my experiment, to lead to the TNT minecart going over the tree. I was just going to destroy this in spectacular fashion, but now it looks like I'm destroying a village. But the important thing is that Mojang has a place to experiment because right now people expect everything inside of a snapshot to make it to the end game and this has two crucial failures. One is when people don't like those features. There are people to this day mad that Mojang ruined villager trading because they decided they wanted to rebalance how you got mending and they did decide to rebalance it except they did it as an experiment that never came to the base game but people saw it in snapshots and just assumed yep that's what's gonna happen and I'm mad and uh, speaking of being mad about villagers, uh, so long gay villagers. Um... <laughs> What's important though is that they'd be allowed to experiment with crazy ideas that might not be very popular at first but might lead to very great changes and this didn't work out with the villager trading but on the converse side a lot of people really like the Grimstone name so much so that there are people who still call it that despite it being deep slate for over three years now. This is something that Mojang needs to be able to experiment with without the community saying now it's definitely coming to the game and this is an important thing which obviously as creators we have a part to play in so that they can actually experiment more in given updates. Obviously at the exact same time it needs to be said that when they announce a feature when they show a brand new birch forest they can't later say oh yeah but we don't feel like doing that anymore but anything that comes into a snapshot should be a fun idea that they can implement in the future. People seem to understand this about the redstone changes and I hope that we understand this as a community about the minecart changes and more importantly that we get to play of those minecart changes on bedrock because they're going to be super super fun and so if being able to play around with minecarts and the max speed leads to the sort of data and feedback for Mojang that allows them to meaningfully change transport at some point in the future, I'm entirely down with it. Making a minecart update isn't just making things go faster, but there's a lot of other qualitative changes that I'm sure they're actively listening for, and I really think that as a community we need to come together and say, yeah, good job Mojang, play around with this, give the positive feedback, and hopefully that is what will lead to us getting these things in the future. But speaking of the future, I hope that if you're looking forward to it, you subscribe to this channel, that's where you can stay up to date with the latest in Minecraft news. Uh, also, you can learn about all sorts of aspects of the game. Uh, the ultimate guide for rare items is coming tomorrow, which will be a lot of fun. And just like this villager, following me is something that has all sorts of weird benefits. Uh, and I recommend that you do precisely that if you don't want your village to be exploded. I don't think I meant to say that in a video. So instead, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.